Hello there. Today we are integrating rational functions via partial fractions. To get an idea of how partial fractions work, let's remind ourselves of simply how to combine rational expressions using a common, common denominator. So here we have these two rational expressions. If we want to combine them, we find a common denominator, multiply each expression by the form of one required to create a denominator in each term that's common to them both, and what do we get? Well, we get x squared minus 1 multiplying these two, and this side gives me plus x, and all of this is over x times x plus 1. So we might write this maybe a little cleaner as um, x squared plus 1 as the denominator underneath x squared plus x minus 1. Okay, now the way this will impact your life is as follows. What if I asked you to integrate this little guy here? Well, you can see, at least initially, this does not fit into a du over u problem. And what this allows us, us to do is to integrate this thing. Now, splitting this up may in, in, into other pieces may in general be difficult, and this method of partial fractions will allow us to integrate this thing by going backwards. One way you could do it is to realize that this expression actually equals the original expressions x minus 1 over x plus 1 over x plus 1. Now these expressions are very easy to integrate and so what partial fractions allows you to do is to take a given rational expression, decompose it into these smaller pieces and these smaller pieces are more simple to integrate. Now the way, now standard form, for the rational expression f of x is as a polynomial p of x over a polynomial q of x, and the degree of p is less than the degree of q. Now, if this is not the case, then we'll use long division to put it into standard form. So, for this expression, for example, we would simply take x squared plus 1, divide it into x squared plus x minus 1, and x squared goes into x squared, well, one time, and then we get x squared plus 1, and then when we subtract terms, we get these two terms cancel, um, this is, and we get x negative x minus 2, because when we distribute this negative, this cancels, and this negative makes this negative, and negative 1 and negative 1 give us negative 2. So what this means is our x squared plus x minus 1 over x squared plus 1, well, this equals just the number 1, minus, I'm going to factor out this minus, an x plus 2 over x squared plus x minus 1. Now, this is the standard form. The first will be seven, the integral of 7x minus 8 over x squared plus 2x minus 8. So suppose we want to integrate this rational function. But to decompose it into a sum of more simple pieces, this is what we're going to do. So first, we're going to take the 7x minus 8 over x squared plus 2x minus 8, and we're simply going to factor the denominator. So if you factor this denominator, you'll get x plus 4 and x minus 2. Now, what we're going to do next is observe that the denominator factors into 2, or at least, yes, the fact it, it factors into two distinct linear terms. And that's what's important about method number one, is that there are distinct linear terms composing your denominator. Well, if that happens, then we simply are going to write this <clears throat> as a over x plus 4, and a is some unknown expression that we are going to find over, I mean, plus b times x minus 2. Now all we have to do is multiply both sides of the equation by the common denominator. So we want to just clear out these denominators. So if we multiply both sides by this term, well, what we're going to get then is that 7x minus 8 has to equal a times x minus 2, because this term multiplied by the green guy, these x plus 4s cancel. And so then when we multiply b over x minus 2 times this, the x minus 2s cancel, and we're just left with x plus 4. So then we multiply this through, and we have ax minus 2a plus bx plus 4b. Now this all has to add up to give me 7x minus 8. So what this tells us then is that, well, this ax and bx, they are these are just numbers these, or, 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 or expressions, and these can be <clears throat> factored out. So you add them together, and then factor the x out, and you get a plus b times x. And then minus 2a plus 4b just simply goes over here. And then what you'll notice then 
is that, well, a plus b has to equal 7, and then um, negative 2a plus 4b has to equal negative 8. And so let's write those equations down. So a plus b has to equal 7, and then negative 2a plus 4b has to equal negative 8. <clears throat> well, then this tells me that a is 7 minus b, and so I have to take this and substitute in, and I have negative 2 times 7 minus b plus 4b. Now that has to equal negative 8, but what that really is equal to is four, negative 14 plus 2b, and then add on this other 4b here. So this is 6b minus 14. Now again, this has to equal negative 8, and so my 6b has to equal 14 and 8 make that 6. 14 and negative 8, yes, 14 subtract 8 is 6, and so that b is then equal to 1. Well, then I go back up here and say, well, a plus b is equal to 7, and so a must be equal to 6. And so what this has done for me is it's allowing me to evaluate this integral, which I might not know how to do otherwise, or it might be easier to do it this way than some other way. So I'm just going to evaluate this integral as, I'm going to rewrite this integrand as 6 over x plus 4. Now, where is this coming from? This is coming from this decomposition here. And then this is just plus 1 over x minus 2. Now, this is all with respect to x, and so this is just 6 ln x plus 4 after I perform the first integration, and then this is just plus ln absolute x minus 2, and then this is all plus c. And so we've turned this potentially difficult problem in calculus into largely uh, a problem in algebra, and that's just a common, common trick. So this is the first kind of problem you'll see when you're solving a rational expression um, antiderivative problem using the method of partial fractions. Okay, the other kind of idea, well, the other kind of rational expression that you might see is one that is the integrand of a problem like this. So we have x squared minus 3x plus 1 all divided by x squared plus times x plus 1. Okay, so if we were to integrate this guy using the method of partial fractions, well, the first thing we could do is realize that, hey, this bottom denominator does not split into distinct linear factors. This term's not linear. <clears throat> this is a repeated linear factor. This is a so this is, there's a linear factor here, or this denominator, that's x, and it's a repeated linear factor. And the way we're going to decompose this into partial fractions is simply by using a rational expression for each factor along the way. So we want to have an, an a representing that linear term x, and then we want to have a b that represents that x squared term. So we want to write it like this. So a over x plus b times x squared plus c well, a over x plus b over x squared plus c over x plus 1. Now, theorems in algebra guarantee that this expression can be solved for a, b, and c. And to do so, we just simply, like we did before, we multiply both sides of the equation by this common denominator here. And so if we multiply this side by x squared times x plus 1, we'll get, well, a, x times x plus 1 plus b, times x plus 1, because the x squared cancels with this x squared, and the c over x plus 1, when multiplied by, through by the common denominator, is just c x squared. Now multiplying this denominator by the left-hand side, just simply clear. Okay, so now I collect terms, and I have a plus c x squared plus a plus b x plus b. This has to equal x squared minus 3x plus 1. So this tells me well, that b has to equal 1, and a plus c has to equal 1, and a plus b have to equal negative 3. So I can substitute this b in here, and so a is equal to a, a is equal to 1, a is equal to negative 3 minus 1, so that's negative 4. And so this negative 4 goes here, and so c must then equal, if I add 4 to the sides, I'll get 5. So c must equal 5. Let me check, check my arithmetic. So 5 and negative 4 make 1, and then 1 and negative 4 make negative 3. Okay, good. So what this te tells me is that this integral can be written as negative 4 over x, the integral of negative 4 over x, plus
plus 1 over x squared plus 5 over x plus 1. Now each of these is easily differentiated. This is an ln, negative 4 ln x, this is negative 1 over x, but this is u to the n du, and this is just 5 absolute, five times ln absolute x plus 1. And so we've turned this problem into a simple integration problem just using some arithmetic. Now the third type of rational expression you will see in integration problems has an irreducible quadratic factor. So this is an irreducible quadratic, that's degree 2, factor. Now, that changes the partial fraction decomposition as follows. So 10 over x minus 1 times x squared plus 9, this will split into an unknown a over the linear term, but for this term, you'll simply put a linear unknown, bx plus c, over the irreducible quadratic. Now, if you write it this way, you're guaranteed that this solution will have pro this equation will have solutions a, b, and c, which give you an equality here that allows you to substitute in for this integral, and these are generally easy, easier to integrate than something something like, like a given problem. So let's find out what these a, b, and c are. Let's clear the denominators by multiplying through by the lowest common denominator of these two expressions. And so the left-hand side is 10, the right-hand side is a times x squared plus 9 plus bx plus c, all times x minus 1. Now if I distribute the a's and b's and c's, I get a, ax squared plus 9a plus bx squared minus bx plus cx minus c. Collect terms, and I have a plus b x squared. Collect the linear terms, and I have plus c minus b x, and the constant terms are 9a minus c. Okay, now this tells me then that a plus b has to equal 0. There's no x squared term on the left-hand side, so a has to be the opposite of b. But there's no linear term either, so c minus b has to equal 0. So in other words, c has to equal on the nose b. Well, I guess that tells me then that a is equal to negative c as well. And this last one will tell me everything I need to know. So 9a minus c is equal to 10. That's the same thing as saying 9a plus a is equal to 10, and this tells me then that a is 1. Substitute back in, then I get b is negative 1, and c is negative 1 as well. So to integrate this problem, we could simply integrate 1 over x minus 1 plus negative x minus 1 over x squared plus 9. Take your negative, factor that out. That will leave you with x plus 1 on the top. Clean this up a bit. There we go. All right. That looks good. So now to integrate this, this guy is just ln of absolute x minus 1. Now this guy, let's write it as the integral of x plus 1. 9, x squared plus 9, excuse me, um, check, let's write this as the sum of two integrals, one is x over x squared plus 9 dx, and the other is the integral of, minus the integral of 1 over x squared plus 9 dx, and this guy is a u to the n du problem, because, well, u is x squared plus 9, du is 2x, and so this guy is just negative ln absolute, negative 2 ln absolute x squared plus 9. I guess it's dx there, I forgot that. And this one is just arc, is an arc tan, and we can see that as follows. Remember, this x squared plus 9, you can substitute x is equal to tangent theta. Actually, first, in this integral, we can see it's an arc tangent uh, as follows. First, I recommend factoring out a 9 from the bottom and getting x, factoring out a 9 from the bottom and getting x squared over 9 plus 1, all under 1 dx. So this negative, this 9 in the bottom comes out in front. And now we just have dx over x squared over 9. But if I can make the substitution u is equal to x over 3, then, well, du is equal to 1 third dx. In other words, dx is equal to 3 du. And then x is then u squared plus 1 is equal to exactly what I have here. So then this becomes 3 du over u squared plus 1. So the 3 comes out in front and makes this a negative 1 third. So this is negative 1 third arctan of u. But that arctan, that u is x over 3. So this is just arctangent of x over 3. All righty. And so the sum of these three inter terms is the integral of this little puppy here. All right. That's it.